Hi, this is Beth at BB Arts. I want to show you how to make one of the easiest, fastest watercolor sketchbooks. It doesn't involve any sewing or stapling or taping. In fact, it's made out of one sheet of watercolor paper. It has many names, but I call it an accordion flip because the pages are cut and folded so that they form an accordion and then it flips to form another accordion. And then I bound it with a hard cover and put an elastic band on it to give it a more finished sketchbook look. But instead of me telling you about it, why don't I show you? I start off with a sheet of watercolor paper. This is a Strathmore 400 series that I got at my craft store. It's approximately 22 inches this way by 30 inches this way. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold the paper in half. But I'm not going to make a sharp crease. I'm just going to very gently ease it into a fold and try to get it as straight as I can before I press it down. And once I get a gentle fold on this, because it is an accordion and I want to be able to open it and paint maybe in a landscape mode and not have a sharp crease going down the middle of my picture. I'm opening it up and I'm folding that half in half, like so. Again, a very gentle crease, nothing sharp. I'm going to take the page and I'm going to come in this way, halfway, and fold it. Like that. And just very, very, very gently put a crease in it. Just enough so I can see it. And then I end up with four sections. Now I'm going to do the same thing in the other direction. And I'm going to fold the paper in half. It's going to fight me here because it's going against its grain, but we'll just tough it out here. And crease it. And then open it up. I'm going to fold this into the center. Very gently crease it. I think this is the hardest part of doing this, which really isn't that hard. And crease it gently along here and just ease the fold down. And do you have it going in both directions? And when you open it up, you should have 16 squares four going this way and four going this way. And I'm only folding it enough so that I can see a line in which to cut this. Now, I want to keep this in a landscape mode, so I'm going to turn the paper and I want it to be in this landscape mode here. So what I'm going to do is cut along this line until I get to this intersection where these two lines cross. Then the next row I'm going to cut this way until I get to this intersection. And then this row I'm going to cut until I get to this intersection. I'm going to turn this because I am right-handed. and. I'm just going to very carefully cut this as close to the line as I can keep it. Now it does have that deckled edge, so I'm not going to worry about getting a perfectly straight line. Skip this one and then come down to this one and cut this one. And then I'm going to turn it around. So I have these two coming in, and then I'm going to cut this one going this way. Like that. And that's pretty much it.
Now I'm going to start folding this up to make a book. And I want to fold the first one. I want to fold. Uh, I want to fold it under, and then go over, and then go under, like that, and bring this one over. This is going to go backward. And what I'm basically doing is like an accordion. Going forward, and then going backward. And that's why I didn't do very sharp folds, because I knew this was going to go back and forth like this. Folding that way, going backwards, going backwards. And you just keep going back and forth. Until you reach the end. And that is the book. Now that didn't take very long. I want to try to square it off a little bit more. And now we have the accordion and the flip. Accordion and a flip. Accordion. Flip. And then back to the accordion. And you have a finished book. But I would like to have a more finished look. So I'm going to make a hard cover for this and mount this in that book just to hold everything together. So what I'm going to do is sit this to the side for now. And what I did is I took a cardboard box and I cut it apart. And, well, a regular piece of cardboard being corrugated like this will easily bend. So what I did is I took two pieces of cardboard and I glued them together so that... I now have a hard board that's not going to bend. And I made them approximately. I knew this was going to be about a 6 by 8 so I just cut them roughly so I don't have a large piece of cardboard I'm working with. But I now need to cut this down for a cover. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put something down here to cut on. I'm going to find a nice corner and I'm going to lay this on here and leave about, well, about an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch. You know, that's up to you what you want to use. And I'm just going to make a rough measurement here all the way around just to get an approximate size. I'm going to take a straight edge and make it a little more accurate. So it's about a six, a little bit over six. Yeah, that's pretty good. It came out pretty even. just a little bit over six by eight finish size which is a pretty standard size okay and then I'm going to take my exacto knife and I'm going to take the exacto knife and I'm just going to very gently cut this Be very careful with these things. I'm going to completely cut through this and I'm going to turn the other side and cut the other side. So I have a six by eight piece of cardboard. I'm going to lay this on my other cardboard so that both sides are identical. And just trace this along here. And to make sure that these line up, I'm just going to put a little X in the corner so that they, I know which corners go to which. And I'll cut that later. Next I need to cut some fabric to put on top of this. So I'm going to take a piece of fabric and measure it to make sure I have more than enough here. I'm going to get one this side. And yeah, that should be more than enough. And I'm going to cut this down the center 
so that I have enough fabric to cover both of them. Okay. The next thing I need to do is to glue this. And you can use any kind of white glue that you want to use. And I'm just going to run this all along here. I'm just going to take a piece of my uh, cardboard here, and I'm going to use it as a scraper. Just need to get this on here. Trying to do this as neatly as possible. And lay my fabric on top. I don't have to hold it. Make sure I have it lined and centered. Now, if you're using a fabric with a stripe or a plaid, you want to make sure that your lines are lined up. And you want to make sure we spread this out. And then we're going to do the corners. Now, whenever you cut fabric, you're going to end up with a raw edge. So I'm not going to cut my corners because when you get a raw edge, it's going to uh, start to unravel. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue in each corner, and I'm going to bring this, well, spread that out a little bit so I don't have as many lumps. And I'm going to bring this corner in at a 90 degree angle and just press it down. And do that to all the corners so that I have a 90 degree angle. And then I'm going to spread some more glue along the edge here. Like that. I'll use my cardboard to spread it down. corners in and make as tight a fold as I can like that. When I have glue all over me everything's going to stick to me. I bring my corners in neatly and press them in. corners will be tucked in. You won't see any of this because the paper, this first page, is going to be glued down to it. But I still would like it to be as neat as possible. When I've glued this side, and to keep this video from being too long, what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue the other side. I'm going to pause, glue the other board, and then I'll be right back. All right, I'm back now. So now I have both pieces glued and ready. And what I did is I decided this one would be the front, and this one's going to be the back. So then I went through and I measured um, halfway this way and halfway this way to find the very center. And then I took an X-Acto knife and I cut all the way down through here, all the way through to the other side, and I cut a small gash. Now I was going to put a piece of elastic in there, but I promised you at the beginning this would be a no-sew sketchbook. So what I did is... When I was at the Dollar Tree, I bought a package of headbands, elastic headbands. And I'm going to take one of these headbands, and I'm going to feel around for the... There's a point here where the two ends are fused together. And I'm going to put a paper clip on this so that I know where that is. Because I don't want to accidentally glue it so that it's on the front. I want the front to be a nice, clean band. 
So now I'm going to take this part that's fused and I'm going to glue it into the back of the book. But first I need to push it through. And I'm just going to take a butter knife here and I'm going to push this through that slot. It's going to take a little bit of persuading to do this. A paper clip is going to serve another purpose. That when I pull this through, it's going to keep that band from coming through. But because that paper clip is sticking up, if I glue the paper on, it's going to leave a bump. So what I'm going to do is take the X-Acto knife and go all the way around and just very lightly cut the surface of the paper. I'm sorry if my fingers are in the way. But I'm just going to very carefully just cut the first layer of paper on the cardboard. Just like that. I'm not cutting all the way through. I'm just cutting the first layer before I get to the corrugated part. I'm going to pull this out part way and then I'm going to take the X-Acto knife and I'm just going to very gently cut off that first layer without cutting the band. But just cutting that first layer off and peeling it off. Just like that. I don't want to go too deep because I don't want this to pull all the way through the cardboard. I just want to make a little recessed area for the paper clip. And the corrugated part I can squash down a little. Okay. And now, when I pull this paper clip through, I just want it to hold enough until I can glue the paper down. And I don't want that to shift around. So I'm going to take a little piece of tape. And it doesn't have to be any fancy tape. It could be masking tape, scotch tape, any kind of tape. Just a piece of tape to hold that in place until I can glue the paper down. I'll make sure there's no crease there. There we go. And that's going to push down into the cardboard. And the band's going to come. And it's going to hold it. All right, and now I can assemble the book. What I'm going to do is take the book to the back page. I'm going to put a piece of wax paper in here and put some glue on this. And use my good old cardboard scraper. Make sure I don't get any glue on any other part of this book. I just want this page glued down. Like that. this board. Try and center it. That's hard to see. Just press it down enough so it sticks and then go to the back page and press it down more. Just like that. Okay. And then I'm going to pull this to the sticky parts inside. And I'm going to glue this one. part that's messy. Make sure my cover is straight. lined up. And then press this down. And shift it just a little bit more. There we go. And then press this down. 
Now, normally when you glue a book together, you put something heavy on it and press it down. But you can't do that with this because the, the glue will squeeze out of the edges and glue the next page down. So the only thing that you can do is just squeeze it firmly. But we're going to have to let this dry open. You see how that one's starting to stick? So when you let this dry, you're going to have to leave it open so that these pages here don't glue in. Now if you want to sit something heavy on this, then you can, but I don't think it's really necessary. This watercolor paper is very rough and it is grabbing onto that glue and onto the rough fabric. So I would just leave it separated like this so that the pages are not sticking together like this and let it dry separated like that and sit it off to the side and let it dry. But when you're done, your band will come around and it will grip this and you will have a nice watercolor sketchbook. And I'm going to leave this open to dry. I don't want the pages to glue together. I'll leave that to dry. And on the finished one, make sure that you sign your name inside and put the sticker from the paper. That way you know what kind of paper you have and the, the weight and everything else.